I've just been having a press conference and I thought perhaps it might be interesting to you if I just referred to one or two of the matters that I've been discussing in the press conference. The first of them, of course, concerns the matter which excites the interests of the whole world, the possibility of a summit conference to discuss the settlement of Europe and ultimately, of course, the pacification of the world. Now, one thing that I really discovered vividly in the course of this journey was that there's not so much a disagreement about this matter in principle as there is in timetable and conditions. I think that all the leaders of the West and the leaders at the Kremlin believe in a summit conference in principle. But the President of the United States, for example, has said and has said repeatedly that he wants to have some guarantee that a conference will not be futile. He wants some gesture, some earnest on the part of the Soviet Union. I found in my discussions with Chancellor Adenauer and with President de Gaulle that each of them feels that at least there ought to be some settled topic that is to be discussed and some assurance that it will be discussed uh, with the spirit of goodwill and a desire to reach a conclusion. Now these are of course quite intelligible points of view. But I myself believe that one way or the other there will be a summit con that they should not be on the defensive on this matter. But then I don't despair of, uh, of some result from Geneva. It's quite true that some of the things to be talked about uh, won't lend themselves to settlement. You can't get agreement about the reunification of Germany this year or next year or the year after. You can't settle the nice legal questions that they've been discussing about Berlin because there's no judge, no jury. Now I won't say any more about that because I'm up against the clock on this matter. But I just add a word, uh, if I may, about um, Singapore because that was my last port of call. Prime Minister of Singapore was the last of ten heads of government with whom I've had long and close discussions in the last eight weeks. I just tell you this, that the average age of the new cabinet in Singapore is 37 and a half. The Prime Minister himself is 36. These are, if you like to put it in that way, relatively inexperienced men. But nobody doubts their integrity. The Prime Minister himself is a man of the highest scholastic and legal attainments. People respect them for their character. We don't want to fall into a position of criticism too soon. They have been elected by their people and to be elected by their people represents the success of our own British policies in these countries. I'm sure they're going to do their best. They have some tremendously difficult sticky problems because Singapore Island is not very big and it has a large population. 